Hello and welcome. I am Mara Cepeda. This is Rappler Talk. We are here today with Mr. J.B. Bailon, the Vice President for Corporate Communications of Nickel Asia Corporation. Hello, sir. Thank you for accommodating us today. Thank you for having me on the show. How did the tenure of former Environment Secretary Gina Lopez affect Nickel Asia's corporation's operations in the Philippines? Um, not much, except for the uh, um, order she gave over one of our mines, Sinatuan Mining, which is uh, one of the smallest. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, well, it was uh, business as usual. We were confident that um, we would pass her audit, just as we had passed the ISO 40,000 audit before that. Mm -hmm. And we were proven right. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, when she came to visit Rio Tuba in uh, Palawan, um, she got to exclaim na pwede pala. Mm. Uh, an acknowledgement that the responsible mining is real and is being practiced by firms like Rio Tuba. When did she visit Rio Tuba? Oh, I never forget the date. It's December 7, Pearl Harbor. Mm. So I considered her like uh, the Japanese invading Pearl Harbor. But it turned out to be much better than I expected mm -hmm. because she acknowledged that the people were happy, that uh, we were on our way to succeeding and that she was looking forward to working with us to make it even better. And weeks, but weeks later, she had accused uh, Mr. Manuel Zamora of supposedly killing a mountain. Was that a surprise to the company? Well, uh, if you know the story kasi of, uh, and I'm not sure if I should say this, but I'll say it anyway and get <laughs> fired in the process. Um, Rio Tuba is a Manny Zamora baby. Mm. Hinatuan, which uh, she claimed uh, was the site of the killing of a mountain mm. was actually originally uh, operation of another brother of Mr. Manny Zamora. Mm. So when so it was Manny Zamora who took over the operation um, in the early 2000s, and so personally, I think the killing of the mountain was done by a different brother. Mm. But publicly, uh, it has been parang attributed to Mr. Manny Zamora. Anyway, he issued a. Rejoinder. Well, sir, can you give us an update on the Hinutuan uh, mining site? Since it, there seems to be a misconception that it has been closed, since there was a show, there was a, I think a ruling that it has to give a reason why it should not be closed down. Yes, but uh, as in any legal uh, finding, you have a right to appeal, mm -hmm. and like many of the others uh, issued show cause orders, mm -hmm. Hinutuan has appealed to the office of the president. Mm -hmm. Now, pending that, pending any final determination. You operate, no? so operations continue, uh, and that still is the case until the office of the president finally passes on our motion of reconsideration or appeal. No? So that's the case there. Mm -hmm. Of course, the allegations were uh, siltation and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that has also been res uh, answered by Hinatuan in their letter to the executive secretary. All right. Okay. Now the president, uh, right after. Former Secretary Gina Lopez was um, her her appointment was not confirmed by the mm -hmm. CA. He supposedly said that the members of the CA may lobby money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to some it seems to be a hit to Nickel Asia, considering that Congressman Ronald Zamora is has ties to the mining company. Uh, how would you answer? Do you want that? me to give you my personal or the official response of Nickel Asia? Perhaps both, sir. Oh. <laughs> because I will give you a personal response mm. as a student of political science. Mm. Um, and it's going to be very long. It'll be good enough for three weeks of your show. <laughs> um, first of all, <clears throat> if you understand politics, whether Philippine or American politics, mm. the House is usually closer to the President of the United States or the Philippines. The Senate is usually more independent, meaning that congressmen very rarely do something which the President does not approve. Mm. Senators always do things which the president does not approve because they look at themselves as future presidents. Mm -hmm. When a House contingent votes solidly in favor of or against a president's nominee, as a political scientist, I read that as something the president approved. Okay. Because no congressman will dare mm. go against the president's wish. And so this whole hula baloo about, you know, that the CA was bought fails is, I think, a very shallow uh, understanding of politics as it is played, not only in the Philippines, but even in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and one more thing. <clears throat> Again, for political scientists, you will understand that the commission appointments process is an opportunity for legislators to help influence a department, whether it's a DFA, finance, etc., etc. And how do you influence a department 
if you do not show um, power. And how do you show power in an appointment process? In this case, the House apparently, from the beginning of the Duterte administration, has decided that they will vote as a block, which means I can look at you and say, um, Secretary Designate Mara, you need 13 votes. I have 12. This is what I want, or these are what the amendments I need, or this is what I think you should be doing. Mm -hmm. You talk to me. Now, the senators will never vote as a block because we all know that the senators have their own kingdoms. They all feel that they are you know, future presidents. Mm -hmm. And they will never vote together. Eh? Yeah. And so that, to me, was a genius of this House delegation. Mm -hmm. Whoever the nominee was, they were going to vote as a block, meaning I already have 12 votes. All I need is one or two more senators, and you're either dead or you're passed. Mm -hmm. but, but citizens who are not political science students mm -hmm. don't see it that way. Yeah. They see the fact that, Oh, Ronnie Zamora's brother is Manny Zamora. Yes. Gatsalian is in mining. But they don't see that Lauren Legarda was nobody if not for ABS-CBN. Right? So yes. if you say there was lobby money, or if you say this group should inhibit, then I say the other group should inhibit themselves. You know? BAM, maybe, because it was an Aquino administration which gave the Lopez's back mm. ABS-CBN. Kiko was my classmate because his wife has a show in ABS-CBN. I mean, it goes both ways. You cannot just say it's only one side or the other. Now, to the point of the former secretary that um, lobby money, <clears throat> I find that both insulting and arrogant. Mm. Insulting because it seems like you're saying, oh, nobody will vote against me unless he's paid. That's insulting and that's arrogant as if you're so correct that the only person who will go against you is someone who is wrong. But That's it's the president who said the lobby. No, okay. Going to the president. <clears throat> First, he backpedaled. Mm -hmm. And remember, he himself said before that out of four things I say, one is serious, but the third, three are... And knowing this president, he has a different style. I think this president is a president who leads by saying something outrageous mm -hmm. because in the process, something um, is achieved. And I think this is one of them. How about the company's what? answer? Is that the, also the company's answer also? Since you said the, the answer is supposed to be different. Oh, no, no. <coughs> I was asking if we're, because Nicolaisha has no official comment. No official comment. No, we just laugh about it. Mm -hmm. But this is my personal, as a political science student and as a columnist in a mm -hmm. great newspaper called Malay, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. That's my analysis of the situation. Well, moving forward, how does the company view the new environment secretary, Roy Simato, considering that he does not have an environment background? Is that a cause of, for a concern for the company? Um, first of all, um, Nickel Asia has been willing to deal with any secretary, whoever it is, because to us, their laws are very simple. They're, they're, they're black and white. Eh? Mm. And when people ask me, what's your definition of a responsible mining operation? It's a mining operation which follows the law. So whoever the secretary is, this is the law. Mm -hmm. Now, the difficulty with Secretary Gina was, this is the law, but she doesn't like it. Eh? She has her own secretaries, whatever. So that was, dif that was difficult. Now, with Secretary Simatu, I mean, if he relies on the bureaucracy of the DNR, which, the sec which former Secretary Gina didn't rely on too much, mm -hmm. that might not be a problem. But I hope, being a military man, he will bring to his position, an iron fist, mm -hmm. which is what we have to do to deal with the irresponsible in the industry. Mm -hmm. Because let's admit it, in any industry, even in broadcast industry, there are irresponsible practitioners. But that does not, you know, tar the whole, in, it's not fair that just because there's an irresponsible broadcaster, I'll say you're irresponsible. Similarly, in the mining industry, the fact that they're irresponsible miners doesn't make all of us irresponsible. Mm -hmm. The secretary will have to be careful in delineating who is responsible and who is not, and dealing with those irresponsible with an iron hand. Mm -hmm. Now let's go deeper into your company. Describe to us how, uh, <coughs> describe to us the scale of Nickel Asia's uh, operations here in the Philippines, and how different is it from the mining companies in abroad, like in Indonesia, or Russia, or <coughs> Latin America? Where we're better looking than Indonesians and Russians. <laughs> now, as to the scale, uh, I really can't say much about. Indonesians and Russians, no? mm -hmm. um, but in the Philippines, we are the largest uh, nickel laterite uh, producer. Um, and so, uh, 
Now, I think we are the only one with two processing plants, mm -hmm. one in Palawan and one in Surigao. Mm -hmm. The one in Surigao, the one in Palawan costing $600 million, the one in Surigao, mm -hmm. I think $1.6 mm -hmm. because of the an NPA attack which mm -hmm. uh, increased the cost. Um, I think it is credit to Nickel Asia that because their operations have been ongoing for 40 years, even when prices go down, mm -hmm. we are able to remain a profitable operation. Okay. Uh, I just came from Hanoi. I found out there's a nickel operation there, which is on, in care and maintenance mode because they could not operate profitably given today's prices. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case with Nickel Asia. Mm. Now, the difference between the Philippines and Indonesia when, term, when it comes to ore is the grade. Okay. Indonesian uh, nickel ore grade, if I'm not mistaken, are of a higher quality or higher grade than Philippine uh, nickel ore. No? So that's a difference in pricing as well as in the grade. How does a company view Indonesia lifting the export ban on unprocessed nickel ore? We're not surprised. No, I think it, that, that should actually be a lesson to Filipino mm. legislators who wanted to follow the Indonesian ban. Okay. Because when also. Indonesia clamped down on exporting raw ore, mm -hmm. but now you see they have had to go back to the drawing board and say, oops, mm -hmm. we were not exactly doing the right thing. As I said, they export a different grade of, uh, of nickel. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really compete directly with, with us. Mm -hmm. um, so there, but of course, there's still some effect on the overall nickel market, mm -hmm. but in terms of grade, kasi magkaiba. Do you need to adjust since they left no, 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 the no, ban? No, no, no. No need. How come? Except we're not on the same grade mm. guy. Okay. Diba? So that's a different market for, for the market that we have. Let's go to your Chinese market. We understand that the president you know, <coughs> has shifted the country's foreign policy when it comes to China. Did it somehow affect your operations No, there? no, no. We've, uh, we've had Chinese buyers since 2004, mm. long before Nickel Asia was even established. No? Yes. So our operating mines have had Chinese buyers uh, f since 2004. Mm -hmm. So unless we, have, we go to war with China, I don't think it'll be affected. All right, okay. Now, running a mining company is a long-term and capital-intensive <coughs> endeavor, as we have learned when we visited your mine this morning. And just how much do you spend to maintain a massive operation just like that? Whoa, how much do we spend? Uh, first of all, because we're a listed company, I have to ask my finance <laughs> uh, vice or president. Or maybe you can just describe to us the, the, the operations to, to maintain that. Um, it, it's difficult to answer that, but let me give you an anecdote. Mm. Um, when nickel prices collapsed in the late 1990s, mm. Manny Zamora was faced with the question, do I close the mine mm -hmm. or do I operate at a loss? Mm. Uh, knowing that if he closes the mine and opens it later on, it's going to cost him more. Mm -hmm. So he kept the mine operating at a loss no? and shipping the high-grade ore and stockpiling the low-grade ore because nobody was buying the low-grade ore. Mm -hmm. But that decision to take a loss or to take a hit came back to benefit him years later when Sumitomo came in with mm -hmm. technology to use the low-grade ore and put up a processing plant. Mm -hmm. So all the waste of his operations during the lean season now became a source of income during a peak season. Mm -hmm. So those are the decisions which are very difficult to make, but you know, it takes a manager more to do it. Um, if I were him, I may have to taken my money and w gone to Disneyland instead. <laughs> no? But uh, as you saw it, um, when you have an operation like that, uh, it requires a lot financially as well as in human capital. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that Nicola Asia doesn't, you know, doesn't blink. You have mentioned that uh, there are only two hydro-metallurgical yeah. nickel processing plants in the, PA, in the Philippines and both are owned. By Nickel Asia. Now, why we have a 10% equity in both. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I, I was supposed to add that. Now, why do you think most Philippine miners extract raw mater materials and ship them abroad instead of you know, add, uh, processing them here in the Philippines and adding value to them before uh, exporting the product? Well, first of all, um, volume is required. Mm -hmm. you, must have to have, you must be able to have a plant in an area where volume is required, mm -hmm. is, is, is sufficient. Second, uh, it requires a partnership. And Mr. Zamora, over 40 years, has established a good working relationship with the Japanese. So it's not surprising that the Japanese chose him to be a partner in putting up, first in, mm. in Palawan, which became a test case for the bigger one in Surigao. Mm -hmm. um, so you cannot expect every mine to have a processing plant. Mm. Uh, in fact, and this is public 
knowledge anyway, mm -hmm. the processing plants are not making that much, in, are not making money this year because the nickel prices in the world are low. So if you were to require all mining firms to have processing plants, hindi na kayang gawin. They either don't have the capital or the partnership. Mm -hmm. And if they did, they would be losing today. Mm -hmm. Now, Nickel Asia, and this is, I'm saying this is public knowledge because it's part of our declaration for our stockholders meeting, is taking a loss from its operations in the processing plant, but making up for it in the export of raw ore. Mm -hmm. So that's how we are able to survive. But again, it's not right to say that since we can do it, everybody should. Mm -hmm. Not every farmer with a cow owns a Jollibee outlet. Yes. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. Now, can you give us an overview of how uh, Nickel Asia is doing mining rehabilitation? Since your model seems to be, your, your business model <coughs> is actually considered a model for responsible mining. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think to be fair to all other uh, miners in the Philippines, you mm -hmm. cannot rehabilitate a mine and it is, it is mined out. Mm, so for a mine to be mined out, you have, been, have to have been operating for some time, 10, 20 years. No? There are very few mines who are that old. Mm. And so it is not fair to expect uh, other mines to have rehabilitated areas because they're not old mines. Mm -hmm. Now in our case, uh, we practice what we call progressive mine rehab, meaning as soon as we have mined out a certain area, we rehabilitate the area already and move on. Mm -hmm. Rather than wait until you've mined out the whole area and rehabilitate it at the end, mm -hmm. what we do it already as soon as we're done with that area. So by the time we, e we end up with the last piece, it's only that area which we'll have to rehabilitate. And those who have re rehabilitated previously, would already have forests uh, mm -hmm. as a reward. No? Mm -hmm. So, and we have Dr. Ranes in uh, Rio Tuba to, to, to thank for that. What are the difficulties in rehabilitating a mine? It's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, having to recontour the land, no? then having to cover it up with uh, topsoil and you know, chicken dung and everything. And of course, planting all of those um, seedlings which come from your seedling bank. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an operation which only irresponsible miners would, would, would take. No? Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's one way of gauging which is irresponsible mine and which isn't because it's an expense mm -hmm. uh, for a mining operation. Oh, um, now I noticed that um, in your mine in Rio Tuba, the miners' families are already stay living there too. <coughs> Can you describe to us how you uh, built a community within the mine and how you are sustaining them? Because to me, they seem to be very, very pleased in their life there. Oh, we made sure they were pleased when you arrived. <laughs> no, but think of it this way, right? You visit Rio Tuba in the year 2017. Mm -hmm. um, imagine Rio Tuba 40 years ago in 1970, when they were first operating. You are at the end of the province of Palawan, mm -hmm. right? And you can imagine that the road, first of all, there was no road from Puerto Princesa to Rio Tuba. Mm -hmm. You had to go to Brooks Point, and from Brooks Point, you had to take a boat of three hours to get to Rio Tuba. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll take you about five to seven hours to get from Puerto to Brooks Point. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine in the 1970s, you discover a, uh, an ore load of nickel mm -hmm. at the end of Palawan and the only way you can entice miners to come is to make sure that they can bring their families mm -hmm. and so you have to create a town site you bring the wife there has to be a palenque you bring the kids there has to be a school of course if there are kids and wives there has to be a hospital that's why you have a town site mm -hmm. so from 1977 to today where you see Rio Tuba with 17,000 um, population and Batraza as a first-class municipality. That's the impact of mining over the years. Mm. But it, w it had to be done because you're in a totally remote area where people will not go unless you provide them what they need to survive, which is a house, a school, a hospital, and a church. I should not forget the church. <laughs> Now, I did notice in one of the bulletin boards there that some basketball players have been visiting the community. Mm -hmm. Is this part of your rehab program? Well, or? in my previous life, because I was with uh, the PBA as the governor of the Coca-Cola team. And knowing how crazy we are for basketball despite our height, mm -hmm. um, I knew it was a way of reaching out to communities. No? Um, so I brought them. They come for free. I mean, I should not say that. Uh, <laughs> the big stars. And we've done leagues throughout the whole province of Palawan mm -hmm. and, of course, in, in Bataraza. Uh, so there. 
do they help in the operations of the company? Oh, no, 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 no. If they were to involve themselves, we will lose money. So we're just there for, for yes, entertainment? Yes, yes, for all entertainment. Right, all right, okay. I mean, uh, it's nice to walk into, I don't know if you went to the Le Leonidas Virata school. Yeah, yeah, we've seen the, the Mac lab and the classroom. Yeah, yeah, w one time I brought, um, you know, uh, James Yap, mm. and the kids started screaming <laughs> at James Yap, not at me, no? <laughs> so, you know, yung impact, no? Now down to my last few questions Thank for God. today. Okay. <laughs> now, how has the nickel mining industry affect the Philippine economy over the years? Ah, that's a very next question. <laughs> ah, no, no. Um, how has the nickel mining? Well, th th put it this way, because <clears throat> the usual criticism about mining is it only contributes one percent of GDP, etc., etc. If you take it on a national level, right? In fact, if you will use it as a criticism for the nickel mining industry then maybe we should close all the Jollibees because they don't contribute 1% of the GDP. Mm -hmm. However, in the communities where you operate, you are the world, right? If you were to take out, for example, uh, Rio Tuba from Bataraza, Bataraza will revert from being a first-class municipality to a fifth-class municipality. Mm -hmm. So mining operations, nickel mining operations all over the country are able to uplift communities where they operate, especially those where operations are done responsibly, and convert a town like Bataraza from a mendicant town mm -hmm. to a town which is number one in terms of assets and cash, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So that's the impact of not only nickel mining, but every other responsible mining operation in the communities where they operate. Contrary to you know, what some people say that mining causes poverty, you've seen it for yourself. Um, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Now, what can we expect uh, from Nickel Asia in the coming years? I understand you started exploring um, energy. Yeah. <coughs> we are hoping to be re-energized. <laughs> well, because, you see, uh, the problem with uh, mining is your profits are so dependent on global prices. Mm -hmm. You have no control. Mm -hmm. And they could swing from, like we had in 2012, 13, 14, and then it collapses because the Chinese market collapses. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a very, very volatile business. And it requires people with deep pockets or yung mat yung PC, may term yun yun, parang makapal yung PC. Mm. Oh. So, in order to um, spread the, the options for us, no, we, we've, we've started looking at becoming a renewable energy company um, into solar and geothermal. Um, and that's what we're looking at as well. Okay, but I should not say much. <laughs> thank you so much, thank you very uh, much. Uh, VP, for coming here today. <laughs> and there you have it. That was uh, JB Bailon, uh, Vice President for Com Corporate Communications of Nickel Asia Corporation. I am Mary Cepeda. This is Rappler Talk. Join us again next time.